get some uh, reaction to this. Steve Valdez Simons is with Amnesty, speaks on migrants for Amnesty uh, International UK. Uh, Steve Valdez Simons, uh, appreciate your time. Um, what, do you, what should we say to someone like Kim Rye, who, who is a local councillor who feels it's part of her democratic responsibility to try and understand what's happening in her midst? Well, I, I think it's very important for people to um, understand what is happening um, on the south coast and and in in communities, uh, including the one that that she represents, uh, of course that has to be put in a in a fuller picture. Um, we still, although numbers have risen, we still in this country receive relatively few people seeking to seeking asylum, and and that is so compared to our nearest neighbours in uh, in Europe, including France, let alone countries elsewhere. So, it's not um, a particularly dramatic thing that this country receives. Certainly the whole country is responsible for sharing responsibility, not just the people of Kent or the communities in Kent. Um, but we are obliged legally by our um, international duties that we signed up to decades ago um, to play our part in providing safety to people fleeing persecution. And to do that, of course, um, proper assessment needs to be made of people's individual claims. Uh, the Reverend Calvin Robinson has a different view. Calvin, what's your take? Illegal immigrants we're seeing in this footage right now are crossing over the channel from France, a very safe country, into the United Kingdom. So they're not fleeing persecution or anything, are they? They're fleeing a very safe country. Why have they not claimed asylum there, do you think? Well, I, I think there's two things to say in response to that. Firstly, we should be absolutely clear, there is no principle in international law, hasn't been for the last 70 years, of any idea of claiming in the first so-called safe country. That is a myth made up by politicians in this country and indeed elsewhere who seek to absolve themselves of the responsibilities that we share with others. And if there were such a principle, of course, all it would mean, which would be dramatically fatal to international refugee law, is that countries that border conflicts and persecution would be the sole countries responsible for providing for people, even though they continue to be the countries that take by far the greater share of responsibility compared to countries like us. The situation in France is that France already receives very many more refugees into its system, has done for many years, and the truth is that some people, few, but some people, cannot access the asylum system in France. It's something well documented okay. by Amnesty and others for many years. And finally, many of the people, not all, but many of the people who make these crossings have particular connection to this country, including family here. And since we well, make becomes, no provision yeah. for them to be I mean, able to make yeah. any journey other than this one, it's that not becomes, surprising yeah. that we do. I mean, that, that, on the last point, that becomes slightly self-fulfilling, doesn't it, in the sense that the, the diaspora keeps getting bigger as more people come to join it. So it becomes a, the magnetising impact of that is, is increased by the more people who come here. So that becomes slightly self-fulfilling. Uh, Calvin, have you got a point to make? I just think if we want to do this properly, we should work with the countries on the borders of conflicts so that we have agreements in place to legally take a certain number of refugees. And then we would be working in a number that the British people are comfortable with. And you keep saying, you know, we take relatively low, relatively this. Relatively doesn't help when we see that we cannot afford to live in our own country. We're taking in numbers that are harmful to our systems, you know, hospitals, schools, etc., then it's all about what we can capable, what we can comfortably fit in. It's not about how compared to France. It's not about, about compared to Spain or Germany. It's about what we as Brits can take on board comfortably, what we can afford, what resources we have to help. And we should do it properly. And when we see people crossing the channel, throwing their documentation away, crossing illegally, it suggests to me they don't want to do things properly. Well, to be clear, there is no, as you put it, proper route for any of these people to take. So this is all that's left. I agree, in fact, that it would be far better to have arrangements with other countries, including France, so that people could make lawful journeys here and we could share responsibility and have a more managed system. That would be great, but we don't. We don't do it. So this is what is left. I do think that we have to recognise the fact that just as we have concerns about how much responsibility we as a nation are prepared or able to take, so do countries elsewhere. And since many of those countries have far fewer resources than us, if we are not prepared to step up to the mark, I'm afraid all we will see is a continuation of journeys like this. Yeah. 
I mean, the, the problem with those international comparisons is that they can be quite odious, can't they? And you could look at, for instance, very, very wealthy nations in the world who adamantly refuse to take any uh, migrants or asylum seekers. Uh, some very wealthy Gulf states uh, spring to mind, don't they? Steve, Steve Valdez-Simons and Calvin Robinson, thanks both very much indeed uh, for your time.